like oil upon your feet, like wine for you to drink. Jesus. The entrance of his word giveth light. The eyes of your understanding are about to be enlightened. Get set for the word which will change your world for good. Christ Palace, expressing his love, displaying his power. And now, Dr. Mark. That being said, today I want to talk to you about the nature and the manifestations of the anointing. Hallelujah. Now, when you understand the nature of a thing, you know how to relate to that thing. Then you can appreciate that thing. Are you with me? When you are eating a certain food and you know that it can mess up your dress, you know how to eat that food. But when you know that this one, you can just do this, you are, you are a bit careless. In the same way, when you know the nature of the anointing, you will know when it's around. You know how to react to it, how to behave with it. And you understand certain reactions of people when the anointing is present. Are you with me? All right. The first thing about the anointing is that the anointing in the scripture is compared to water. All right. Now, before we pick on that, the first thing you want to understand is that you have some anointing inside you. You have a deposit of God's anointing. So maybe as we started the series, you are thinking that, hmm, God, where am I going to get it? Because you got born again, there's the deposit of the anointing inside you. First John 2.20. Say, I have the anointing. Yes. Say, I have the anointing. And the anointing is a function of the Holy Spirit. If you have the anointing, then it also means that you have the Holy Spirit. Because there is no anointing outside of the Holy Spirit. I think I explained to you the presence and the power. The pillar of cloud is the person of the Holy Spirit. And the pillar of fire is the power, the anointing. Without the cloud, there is no fire. Without the person of the Spirit, you cannot have the anointing. And we said that. Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost, but he had to come in the power of the Spirit. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. When he comes, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The person, then the element. So we have the person of the Spirit and the element of the Spirit. And the element of the Spirit is what we are referring to as the anointing. Are you on the same page? But you have an unction from the Holy One. And you know all things. That word unction means anointing. NIV, please. But you have an anointing. Say, I have an anointing. Oh, shout it. Say, I have an anointing. Tell somebody, I'm too anointed. Verse 27. NIV or King. Let's go back to King James now. As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you, King James. But the anointing which you have received, are you going to receive or you have received? received. That is past tense. It happened in the past. Say, so I have the anointing. I have the anointing. Say, I have the anointing. anointing. Somebody say, I don't feel it. It doesn't matter whether you feel it or not. You have the anointing. How? Because you got born again. The moment you got born again, you became the temple of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit is there, he comes with his full package. You cannot see the Holy Spirit with one leg in heaven and one hand in heaven. He came with his fullness. He is fully loaded and he resides in, inside you. First Corinthians 3, 16. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Oh, where is the Spirit of God? I can't feel you this morning. Where is the Spirit of God? So the Spirit of God is inside you. And the anointing of God is where? Inside you. The Spirit is there. He came with the anointing. Oh, you are loaded. Say, I'm loaded. I'm loaded. Now stop thinking about how come you are not seeing the manifestation. The first point, the first secret to seeing the manifestation is to believe that it is there. If you don't believe that it is there, no one can help you. But believe, acknowledge the presence of the Holy Ghost. Acknowledge that his anointing, his power is resident inside you. Glory be to God. Acts 1 verse 8. Say, I have the anointing. And I have the Holy Spirit. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. If you have received the Holy Ghost, then you have received power. You have it. The problem in the church 
is not powerlessness, it's unused power. Do you know that several years ago, maybe in your town or village, before they brought light there, there was enough electricity to power the whole city. By lack of knowledge, they live in darkness. And right now, there are some towns and cities and countries living in darkness. Is it because there's no electricity? No! Because they don't know how to harness that energy. That is what is happening with believers. There is enough power to change your circumstance, but we don't know how to harness it. So when we come to church, what we must be taught is, how do I harness the power to change my case? That's what we are doing in these meetings. There is enough power to change anything. They say, oh, Romans 8 verse 11. Glory be to Jesus. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, vitalize your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. It was the Holy Ghost who brought the dead body of Jesus back to life. The Bible says that if the same thing which could resurrect Jesus is inside you and you have pain in your knees, what can it not do? No, no, no. The spirit was enough to bring the dead body of Jesus back to life. You are not dead. You just have a pain in your ankle. Don't you think that that Holy Ghost can fix that case? Yes. If the same spirit, I like the expression. If the spirit that, give me the NIV, then we'll go to amplify and message. Ooh, say, I have it in me. Say, it, it is right now, it's here. <laughs> And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. Hey, I like the word living. It's living. It means he's, no, he, he has come to. I want to ask you, if I ask you what is the address of the Holy Ghost, what will you say? <laughs> don't, don't say me. Say, say Victor, Joanna, Fifi. Mention your full name. That's the address of the Holy Ghost. Wherever you are, that is where the Holy Ghost is. Because he is living in you. Because he is living inside you. The Holy Ghost is living where? Inside me. Living. Living. Okay, go to uh, Message Bible or Amplify, one of them. And if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells, that word dwell means abide, tabernacle, shakam, then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore to life your mortal, short-lived, perishable. You see, our bodies are corruptible, perishable. He said that, but the Holy Ghost can work on your body. There is a property of the Holy Ghost I call the anti-aging agent. That you can work the Holy Ghost inside the world, you slow down your aging process. Amen. Amen. How do I know? When the Holy Ghost was with those men, Adam and Co., they lived 900 years. But the more we are not conscious now, our age is coming. But we can work the Holy Ghost that... As your day, so shall your strength be. As your day, so shall your strength be. As your day, so shall your strength be. And we must change our mentality to believe what the word says. Very soon, they will tell you, the flu season is coming. Hey, some of you, before it has come, you are already catching it. Say, I caught the flu. Why did you catch it? <laughs> they caught it by faith. By faith, you are supposed to push it away. Are you with me? Yes. There was one man of God called John Gillick. This is a document you can find out. My goodness. There was a, he was an American. He went to be a missionary in South Africa. There was a plague, deadly plague. And everyone was dying. If you get the plague, it's like Ebola. Everyone was dying. Then, when the doctors, everyone couldn't go close because if you go close, you die. This man called John Gillick will go and carry the people, pray for them. They get healed. And they were waiting for him to fall down and die. He said, ah, ah. You will die. He said, me, I won't die. He said, let me show you something. He said, bring one of the virus and put it under the microscope. So they brought the virus, put it under the microscope. They saw that the virus was alive. He said, let me show you how it works. Now put the virus in my hand. They put the virus in the hand. And I said, now put it back on the microscope. When they put it down, the virus was dead. <laughs> Why? The guy could go to a lab and said, okay, I'm going to show you how the anointing will flow. He, they will put probes. On the, on, the, on the leg and check the, the waves on the screen. 
said the anointing is not flowing right now. I'm going to let it flow. He will sp start speaking in tongues. Then they will put the probes. Then they will see that the, 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 the sign of all that works. The anointing is flowing. Why? The guy understood the mechanism of the Holy Ghost. He is the same person. He is not an angel. He is a man, human being. And yet, he understood what was inside him. He came to Spokane, Washington and started a healing school there. Spokane, Washington, U.S. here. At, when he was alive, the city was called the healthiest state in the U.S. You can just, it's, it's a documented fact. Why? He knew that if the spirit of him that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwelled inside me, the sins which have quickened and vitalized my mortal body. Yes. That spirit can give you intelligence. Yes, it can quick. You like to say, I forget, I forget. The more you say that, the more you introduce forgetfulness in your spirit. Don't say, no, I have the mind of Christ. No, no, no. I have the mind of Christ. Yes, yes, yes. And say, ah, it is age old. You under, is it age old? No! No, a thousand times no. When they were 400, they, they could still remember. When they were 500, they could still remember. Just depend on the spirit of God. Are, are you with me? Yes, yes. You're only 25 and you're saying, because of age, I'm forgetting. When you get to 45, what will happen to you? If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he will raise up Christ Jesus from the dead, will restore life. Message Bible. Ooh. Okay, okay. In whom he dwells, even though you still experience all the limitations of sin, you yourself experience life on God's terms. It starts to reason, doesn't it? If, that if the alive and present God, oh, the alive and present God, who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life. He will do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus. The same thing he did in Jesus. What did he do in Jesus? He brought life. He resurrected the body of Jesus. Listen to me. Put your hand on your abdomen. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every organ in my body. Every organ in my body. Receive life. Receive life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say my kidneys. My kidneys. Life. life. My lungs. My lungs. Life. life, my heart, my heart. Life. life, say my eyes, my eyes. Life. life, my bones, my, bones. my joints, my joints. Life. life, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Rabba Bahaya, bringing you alive to him. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does, as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. With his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ. Ash. Did he say your spirit? That one would have been easy to believe. Did he say your soul? That one would, be, uh, would have been easy. Say your body will be as alive as the Christ's body. Say my life. My life. Say my body, my body. is alive. It's alive. Like, that of Jesus. like that of Jesus. What cannot happen to Jesus? Happen to Jesus? Cannot happen to me. Happen to me. Can I prove it to you one day? Paul went onto an island. And as he was picking sticks, the Bible said a viper, you know a viper, a poisonous viper, it bit Paul. And they said that, Paul, you're a wicked man. You survived shipwreck. And as you came on this land, the viper has beaten you. Paul, you have sinned double. They were waiting for Paul to swell up and die. Two minutes. Thirty minutes. Because they live on that island. They have seen that anyone that viper will bite, that person will die. But Paul is... Two hours waiting for him to. After three hours, the Bible said they changed their mind. They said the gods have come down to us in human form. Do you know that you are a God in human form? Okay, it's okay. It's okay. The way you are looking at me. I'm sure you're going to write a post on Facebook. The pastor said we are gods. This is a God complex. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's start from verse one. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta or Melita. Next verse. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. For they kindled a fire and received us everyone because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. The way to bring vipers out of your life is increase your heat. Some devils can hang around you, live in your house. But when you turn up the heat, they will, they will escape. The heat of prayer, when you start, some friends will just say, you are not my friend any longer. Let them go. Why? The heat is increasing. When you are very cold, a lot of devils can stay around. 
Oh, let's go. <laughs> Verse 4. And when the barbarians saw the venomous, the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer. I think they were right. Paul was once a murderer. But he has changed now. Whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered not to live. Because they know that it, the word venomous means poisonous. Venom is poison. Somebody said, oh, maybe the snake was not poisonous. The Bible didn't want you to doubt. So he said, this is a poisonous one. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Ah. Your, your Google, your Google has told you that the symptoms when the flu season comes is normal. So you have accepted it. Some, some people, when they don't get flu, they are surprised. Ah, ah, I must get flu. It's flu season. My time has come. <laughs> allergy season. Some people, <laughs> they live in a certain land, they never knew they had allergies to they, they go to America. Then they realize they, they are allergic to everything. Everything you are allergic to. But several years ago, you were living your life, you didn't know. But they, it's a consciousness. The foundation for all expression is in consciousness. You don't even know how to spell allergy. But the doctors told you you are allergic to pollen. What is the color of pollen? What is the shape? It's your mind. It's your mind. Believe God's word. So they are waiting for Paul to die. How be it they look when he should have swollen and fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. People are going to change their minds about you. I said people are going to change their minds about you. How? By reason of the anointing which lives inside you. The things you are going through and the things you have been through, they think that by now you should be dead. By now you should be begging, lying by the roadside. But they don't know why you are still alive, laughing and jumping. I came to prophesy to somebody. They are changing their minds about you in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. They look at people who, people who go through what you have gone through. They should not be where you are right now. They are changing their minds. The witches can do something and say that. Are you still alive? You were supposed to be dead two years ago. But they are changing their minds about you. The marriage should have ended six months ago. But after two years, it's still working. They are changing their minds. In the name of Jesus. They change their minds. Devil or man. Some people don't have to be devils to change their mind. They are just ordinary people who, when you are praying, they are laughing at you. When you are going to join, they are laughing at you. When you are giving, they are laughing at you. This church thing, you are taking it too much. Tell them, give me 10 days to make a statement. Just give me one year. Just give me one year. They will change their mind. Very soon, the Bible said, 10 people will hold the hair, the skirt of one who is a Jew, and say that we have seen that God is with you. We want to follow you. I see that people are following you to meet your God. People are following you to meet your God very soon. In the name of Jesus. They saw Paul. Paul should have been there. Paul should have been there because of the poison. The Bible said, when they saw that the guy couldn't say, he was a God. If you come to church and the pastor tells you you are God, has he committed crime? Because they told Paul he was a God. Because that's what the gospel makes you. Yaya kosada. One day, it was, if, if telling people that they are God is a crime, then God, the Papa God, has committed the first crime. When he called Moses, he said, Moses, come. I'm going to make you a god unto Pharaoh. If that statement is wrong, then let's kill God first. But if you can't kill God, you can't kill me. I said, if you can't blame God, you cannot blame me. Go to Psalm 82. Now, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about you. If you are born again, if you are a Christian, this Christianity is not something religious we do. Sunday morning. No, it is life. It is power. It is Raya Baliasus. God standing in the congregation of the mighty. Is God standing among weak people? He said, wherever two or three have gathered, I am there. If God is among us, and he said, he standing among the congregation of the mighty, who do you think you are? Are you weak? No, you are mighty. Say, I am mighty. You see, the world people and religious people want you to say, I'm a sinner, saved by grace. 
I'm only a worm. I'm not a worm. You cannot be a sinner saved by grace at the same time. You were a sinner who has been saved by grace. No longer are you a sinner. You are a new creation. Once I was a sinner. Once. I'm no longer a sinner. I don't care what you think. All I care is what he thinks. Because he has been alive a long time than you. He judged among them. Oh. Is he judging among human beings? No. If no one will tell you, look into the mirror when you go home. Say, ah, Mark, you are better than what they are saying. Yes. You are bigger than that. Yes. 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 It doesn't matter what you are suffering, what you are struggling with. It doesn't matter. What matters is his way. If you believe this, you discover that the struggles will burn. It will fall off. If you believe this, it will just die off. That is the secret of power I already showed you. I showed the secret not to sin. He said, awake to righteousness and sin not. You are asleep to the fact that you are bigger, better, righteous, holy. If you are awake to that truth, that you are a God. How long will he judge unjustly and accept the presence of the wicked? Seller. Seller means pause. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Jump to verse 5 for the sake of that. They know not. Neither would they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. But I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the most high. Somebody believed the second part, but he doesn't believe the first part. But when you believe the second part and don't believe the first part, you are lying. You are deceiving yourself. And God cannot be mocked. Clap for Jesus. Let's believe the word of God. Once we believe the word of God, now, when maybe you are struggling with something or you are, the, the devil wants to put you down and you come to church, you hear that you are God. Then you go home and you say you are God. Then the devil gets mad. <laughs> After all that he's struggling with and he's going through, look at what he's saying. The devil gets mad. But the devil is happy when he puts you down and says, I am down. I am weak. I am nobody. That is where they wanted to get you. But when they wanted to get you, you are not there. They get mad. I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the most high God. Verse 7. It's finished, eh? But ye shall die like men. And fall like one of the Hold on. Hold on. If they are men and they are dying like men, is it a problem? No. Hold on. If they are men, if a dog dies like a dog, is it a problem? No. If they are men, they die like men, is it a problem? No. Because God is looking at you that you are not a man. You are a God. But because you don't know, you will die like a man. Is it a new theology? It's Old Testament. This one is old. Very old. And they will fall like one of the princes. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's see. I didn't want to go that route, but I think the, the meeting has taken there. Okay. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust? And not before the saints. Next verse. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? All right. All right. I think I will stay here and close. Because I've not started the nature of the anointing now and the manifestation. I wanted to explain to you why when the anointing comes upon you, they fall. Why at times you feel that a win, but we can't go there. God will nest with. Let's stay here. He said, the saints shall judge the world. Which people will judge the world? Saints. Who are the saints? I am the saints. Do you believe that you will judge the world? Yes. And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Verse 3. Know ye not that we shall judge? Angels. At the more line, you shall judge an angel. Amen. You shall judge at end. Did I write the Bible? He said, you, 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 you. You shall judge the world, number one. You shall judge angels. How much more things that pertain to this life? Paul is worried about them. Look at your, like, have you tried to advise somebody and say, ah, you are the manager of this company and you are behaving that way. Have you said that to somebody? That's what God is saying now. You shall judge the world. You shall judge angels. They will look at the way you are living your life. I told you, the reason why people live the way they live is what is because they don't know who they are. Say, I know who I am. I know who I am. Verse 4. Verse 4. 
If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. So that when you want to solve a problem in the church, the, the least people should solve the problem. The least. That's what the Bible says. Because we shall judge the world, we shall judge angels. For I have said ye are gods. You are not ordinary. You are not ordinary. If Jesus came just so that one day you would die and go to heaven, he didn't have to go through all that. He should have just collapsed the world and picked people and said, heaven, let's go. But he came to make us like himself. So that we can have fellowship with the Godhead. Oh, we are learning what we are already. We are understanding what we are already. For lack of knowledge, my people perish. Some people are afraid of everything. Worried about everything. Because they don't know who they are. If you knew you had one million dollars in your bank account, you will not cry that God, my, my rent. Because you know. When you know, your prayer point will change. Yes. In the same way, the more we know, the more the Bible said Peter and John were going to the temple at the hour of prayer. When they got there, they saw a beggar sitting by a beautiful place. A beggar by beauty. It doesn't tally. But the beautiful gate had produced a beggar. Wow. At times, beautiful things produce troubles. All right, all right, come. So they asked of him arms and said, please give us some money. The Bible said, Peter said, look at us. Look at us. He said, look at heaven. Look at God. He said, look on us. Look on us. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I, I. Did he say God have? He knows that God has come to stay inside him. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. You want to look at the situations of life, the troubles you are going through, the dreams you are having, and you say, in the name of Jesus, devil, you cannot have my child. You cannot have my daughter. You can't have my husband. You can't have my job. In the name of Jesus, why? There is a divine deposit inside you. When you get born again, there are two aspects concerning you and the Christ. The first thing is that you enter into Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Mm. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say, I'm too, I'm too loaded. Say, I am increasing. I am increasing. Therefore, if any man be in, Christ. he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Next verse. All things are of God. And all things are of God. When you get born again, all things are passed away. Behold, everything around me is new. It doesn't matter what I'm seeing. I am not moved by what I see. I am moved by the word of God. The word of God said all things have become new. It's a new day in my life, a new season. It's a new season. If you believe this, the foundation for all expression is in consciousness. All things are of God. Everything about my life is of God. Nothing demonic, nothing deadly. All things are of God. As you do this, you realize that you come to a place one morning and discover that. Where did that problem pass? Where did that issue pass? It's just over. There's power in God. So when you get born again, you have entered into Christ. Can you see Christ? Can you see you? When you go to bed in the night, understand that Christ is lying on that bed. That which, which will come, it will come and meet Christ. Don't go to bed like a weakling. When you get up with a bad dream, you ask yourself, the whole Christ? Devil, you are a liar! Yeah. I am in Christ. That was a song they were singing. The Bible said, this Christ is the rock. If you are in Christ, you are inside the rock. I am under the rock. The rock is higher than I. When you go to bed, you sleep like a rock. They were trying to invoke the spirit of the archbishop, Benson Idahosa. Occult men, they, he was disturbing their meeting. They said, today is the day they want to kill him. So they wanted to call him. The devil, everything about the devil is funny. And So they were waiting for him to appear. Then they will kill him in spirit. They were waiting and they were waiting. Suddenly, they saw a huge rock appear with light. The devil was in that meeting. By the time the rock landed, the guy who was the occult guy, the human being who has become spiritual, he turned. Devil van, Vamus, Chetanam Vanu Vamus. Everyone was away. And he was arrested. He couldn't move. They heard a voice. 
that I will show you this so that you can be born again. The guy is a pastor right now. The guy is a pastor. He wrote the book, Occult Grandmaster Now in Christ. The guy was an occult grandmaster. The archbishop appeared, but he came as a rock. <laughs> Why? He knew who he was. Not that he was born like that way. He knew he, what he carried. That's what is happening to you right now. Yeah. I said that is what is happening to you right now. Yeah. So you are in Christ. Galatians 3.27. Something is happening to somebody already. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now when you hear the word baptism, your mind just goes to water. Baptism means to immerse. So when the Bible says, as many of you as have been immersed into Christ. So we have immersion in water and immersion in Christ. They are not the same. When you get born again, you are immersed into Christ. Immersed. No, it's not sprinkle, it's immersion. <laughs> That's the meaning of the word. Eh? To make fully wet. Immersed. Right now, where are you? In You're in Christ. If any man be in, in Christ. Christ. Now, as if that is not enough, this is powerful enough. But there's another mystery. But that born again has been that's another thing to you. Even the mystery, which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his sins now. Next verse. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Oh, I was inside Christ from the beginning. But now, where is Christ right now? No, you have to say two things. Inside and outside. So right now, if you look at me, my inside is Christ, my outside is Christ. So he said, all things are of God. Inside out, God. Now, this Christ is called, is called the anointed one. The meaning of Christ is chrism or the uh, creo, uh, chrisma, the anointed one with his anointing. So, if Christ is the anointing and you are inside, where are you? You inside the anointing. Because Christ is the anointed one with his anointing. Then, if you are, Christ is inside you and this is Christ and the Christ is the anointing. Where is the anointing? Inside you. So as you walk through town, you are surrounded by the anointing. And the anointing is inside you. My coil upon your feet Like wine for you to drink Jesus Dr. Mark has just deposited into your hands the truth to your glorious and best life ever. Meditate on these things, give yourself wholly to them, and your progress and success will be evident to all. Connect with Dr. Mark at www.thechristpalace.org or email Dr. Mark at cpimhouston1 at gmail.com. And best of all, come hear the man of God live as you worship with us at Christ Palace International Ministries, 15152 Bel Air Boulevard, Houston, Texas, 77083.